look into my eyes. You're getting very sleepy, very sleepy. You will do my bidding, minion. You will feed your cat approximately 99 times a day. Oh man, my voice is just wrecked. I've had a cold for all of winter. Uh, this cat is kind of my spirit animal. I've got so many cold meds in me, my eyes are kind of doing this at the moment. So I may be feeling a little weird. Anyways, wanted to drop a video blog on what's been going on. Uh, it seems like just a month ago I was posting the Happy New Year 2020. Today is February 4th, 2020. Um, I have been sick pretty much all winter. This is getting ridiculous, guys. Um, I'm not even joking. This is like my third or fourth cold. I've actually lost track. Um, this one's more sinuses, which of course jacks up my voice, which means I can't record. So what have I been doing and what will I be doing specifically with QML? Well, what I've been doing is hanging out in the Void Drums Facebook group and I'm going to lose my voice. I can feel it. Oh, bear with me. Don't lose your voice. There we go. Um, specifically, I've been getting a lot of feedback on some side projects and sp what's going on in Qt. Qt has made some posts that have not been very well received. I don't want to doom and gloom. Um, Qt's going to publish Qt 6 in 2020 and everybody is amped up and ready for it. I mean, I am super pumped for Qt 6, but their offering has changed. Now, what does that mean? Going out and I humbly ask you to go research yourself because I'm probably going to get most of this wrong, but um, the installation process has now changed. You, an account is required. You remember how you used to be able to go out and just download the offline installer and skip whenever it asks for a username and password? You can't do that anymore. You have to have an account, which of course requires an email address. And well, kudos to Qt. I have not been flooded with any sales presentations or calls or anything like that, which is typically what you would get with another company. Again, sorry, I'm gonna lose my voice. This cold is just kicking my butt. So from February onward, everybody, including Qt open source users, will be required to validate an account. And I did have to go through the whole account validation process, and I actually had an account with them previously. So be prepared for that. Also, the LTS and offline installer are now commercial only. That just sucks. That just pisses a lot of people off. I'm sorry. It does. I'm not super impacted by it, but a lot of my friends and fellow developers are really pissed off about that. Um, and then they've got a new licensing model for new startup and small businesses of $500 a year, which to be fair, $500 a year is not a lot. It's less than a hundred dollars a month, but <clears throat> excuse me again, going to lose my voice. Devil is in the details. For example, cute for device creation is included, but not the distribution licenses. Did I just say distribution? Like I said, again, feeling a little weird, cold medicine, um, the distribution licenses are not included. So you can build it, but the minute you go to sell it, now you got to call Cute back and say, hey, let's talk price. What do I need to do? Again, do not take my word for it. Go do your own research. Call Cute directly and ask questions. I encourage everybody to do that. Um, I'm kind of on the fence personally about this. I wish they had done it a little bit differently, but what they're doing strategically as a company makes sense. And I'm not affiliated with Cute, so my opinion means exactly nothing. But I am a consumer, and I actually love the technology. I've been following it for a long, long time. Uh, Qt will continue to be committed to their open source model. I'm applauding that. I'm so happy they're doing that. A lot of companies, <clears throat> excuse me, Oracle, for example, uh, do not like the open source communities. So I'm really happy they're going to stick with the open source model. So with all of these changes and Qt 6 right around the corner, what will I be doing? Well... What I will be doing is wrapping up some Udemy courses. I've been feverishly finishing up the Qt Core Beginners, Intermediate, Advanced, and I just published Qt Widgets not too long ago. And I am, if I can find it, there we go. I am finishing up the code for QML for beginners. Now, when I say for beginners, I'm, anybody who's watched my videos know I take the training wheels off fairly quickly. So. Here's kind of the unofficial errata of what, or I should say table of contents of what this thing is. Intro to QML, overview, uh, first steps into QML. It really starts off with what is a comment, what is a root object. I mean, this assumes you have zero knowledge of QML, but then it just full throttles right through all the basic stuff. You do basic elements, layouts, transformations. 
uh, walk through the designer because that's kind of it's very different than the other cute widgets designer so it takes a little bit to get used to and then we go into controls not a big fan of some of these controls but we go through them uh, similar to how the old YouTube videos were where I say this is a button this is how a button works you know most of you're probably gonna fast forward through most of those videos I actually took containers out and integrated that into controls and into views and we do cover some of these views list view I don't really go too in depth because it's a little bit more advanced than the beginners level bear with me I'm losing my voice okay that's better um, I do cover some basic, basic JavaScript because I realize a lot of you watching these are probably coming from the C++ world and have very little exposure to JavaScript. It's super simple. You can learn it in about an hour. I cover the bare bones basics. And we talk about how to do inline, external functions, external files, and then probably some of the limitations. And this is where I'm at right now with C++ integration. I wasn't going to add this initially, uh, but then I thought... A lot of folks are going to ask how do you do it, even though it's a beginner's course. So might as well just put the bare bones basics of how to do it in there. And then what I'm going to wrap up with are some custom components and then some basic, basic applications like maybe an image viewer, calculator, dice roller, dinner app, like when your wife can't pick a place to eat. I know every guy out there is probably secretly applauding. Just things like that. Now, all of this comes with the caveat that I still want to go through and do a QML intermediate and then on and on and on to advanced and i also want to go back to udemy and do the cute widgets intermediate advanced and wrap that whole thing up the problem comes in cute is changing cute obviously is not going to stay static and we don't want them to so when cute 6 comes out what i'm probably going to do is rename all of these courses to uh, like cute core 5 advanced cute core 5 beginners etc etc and then re-record all of the content for Q6. And I will, you know, obviously go through and retool all the code, make sure that it works, and, you know, use the new build system and all that goodness and try to really stay centric for Q6. There's a lot of changes in Q6 that are still kind of percolating up to the surface and rumors are bubbling, and I've seen some tech talks about it, but uh, there are some things that are going to deviate from Q5. So I want to really nail down Q6 videos and use a lot of the same source code. But at the same time, I don't want it to be just raw repetition of what's already out there. That would just be vastly stupid and unfair. So anyways, that in a nutshell, other than just slowly dying from cough medicine is what I've been doing. But uh, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, trying really hard to push a much of this out by 2020, but my health is just not working with me here. So that's all. I'll talk to you guys later, and thank you for watching, and go feed your cat.